Hey everybody, welcome on back. Now let's talk about conditional execution. Not all programs are straight roads. We may, for example, want to create a branching road where the program takes the proper branch based on the situation at hand. This is called conditional execution. Uh, or going right at the fork in the road because that's the way to the grocery store or going left at the fork because that's the way to school. So, plenty of ways to think about this. But anyway, here's a little diagram of it. We come to here and here's our branch. Uh, and for some reason, we're going to end up at the same place afterwards, which is not always the case, but it will be for at least this, you know, what would be imagistic description. Anyway, uh, conditional execution is created with the if keyword in JavaScript. In the simple case, we want some code to be executed if and only if a certain condition holds. We might, for example, want to show the square of the input only if the input is actually a number. So here we're grabbing the number, then we're going to say if, and it looks like not number dot is not a number, the number. Um, essentially what this boils down to is basically like, hey, if it's not a number. Um, the fun part about that is that we're, well, I would say that there's nothing fun about this because this is a very, very simple statement but involves you kind of like twisting your logic in your head a couple times. Like, so if it's not, not a number, then it is a number which I don't think is very fun. But anyway, we're not only here for fun, we're here for, well, I guess, you know, work. But anyway, with this modification, if you enter parrot, no output is shown. I wonder if we can run that. Ah, we can. So let's go ahead and type in parrot, and we get nothing. Let's run it again, and this time we'll go with a number. Ah, your number is the square root of 169. Excellent. <clears throat> the if keyword executes or skips a statement depending on the value of a Boolean expression. And in this case, this is the Boolean expression they're talking about. If this comes back true, then it's going to execute this code. If it doesn't, it's going to skip it. <clears throat> uh, the deciding expression is written after the keyword between parentheses, followed by the statement to execute. Uh, yep. The number dot is not a number function is a standard JavaScript function that returns true only if the argument it is given is not a number. Um, hmm. Anyway, uh, the number function happens to return not a number when you give it a string that doesn't represent a valid number. Okay, there we go. Um, <clears throat> thus, the conditional translates to unless the number is not a number, do this. Uh, it, which is why I said like this is not fun. This is this is kind of like an aggressively annoying way to describe that because it's like Well, why can't I just see if it's a number which you can but that wouldn't really follow with the whole return values and control flow Sequence that they're building here, which you know is certainly one way to go about it so back to the <clears throat> you know text the statement after the if is wrapped in braces uh, those are gonna be these guys uh, in this example, the braces can be used to group any number of statements into a single statement called a block. You could also have omitted them in this case since they hold only a single statement. But to avoid having to think about whether they are needed, most JavaScript programmers use them in every wrapped statement like this. Uh, I would highly, you know, parrot that sentiment. Um, you can leave off the curly braces as we've seen right here. <clears throat> I don't think that's a good idea. Later on in your JavaScript career, if that's something you're definitely or, or, that you get interested in, then by all means. But at the same time, I've never seen any compelling evidence that it's faster or better. Um, I've only seen evidence that it just confuses people who have never seen it before, or makes them think that this is the kind of thing that they can put multiple lines in, and you can only put one line here if that's the way it's going to go. So, yeah, just something to think about. Um, so we got this. They're using double equals here, which I find to be rather distasteful. I'm going to change it. <coughs> It's true. Excellent. You often won't uh, just have code that executes when a condition holds true, but also code that handles the other case. This alternate path is represented by the second arrow in the diagram. You can use the else keyword together with if to create two separate execution paths. And as you can see, we can see that here. Here's our first execution path. And the second one is going to execute in the case where the first one does not. Uh, if you have more than two paths to choose from, you can chain multiple if-else pairs together. Here's an example. Uh, if number is less than 10, console.log small, uh, else if num is... Okay, and so num is going to be that prompt where you pick a number. Uh, if it's less than 100, it's going to be medium, otherwise it's large. So that's cool. In fact, let's go ahead and run that. So first thing it's going to do is ask for a number. Let's go ahead for a small one. 
turn it again, and we're going to give a medium one, and then we'll go with a large one. Excellent. This program will first check whether num is less than 10. If it is, it chooses that branch, shows small, and is done. And that's the important thing to keep in mind, right? It, anything inside of here is not going to execute if the first one does. If it isn't, it takes the else branch, which contains a second if, so that's this one right here. If the second condition, num is less than 100 holds, that means num is between 10 and 100 and medium is shown. This is a cool thing to think about because every time that we get past a level in an if else if chain, we have the opposite of the first Boolean expression held as true, which is to say that if we get past here, meaning num is not less than 10, then num by definition at this point here is going to be greater than or equal to 10. So if this if statement says num is less than 100, then by here and here, we know for a fact that num is greater than or equal to 10 and less than 100, which is kind of cool. Um, means the number between 10 and 100 and medium is shown. If it doesn't, uh, the second and last else branch is chosen. Uh, the schema for this program looks something like this. So here we start, we go for if, go this, else, if this way, else, which is nice. So that's pretty much it for that uh, subsection. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.